Hey, I'm Helena, and this is Swisspreneur Summaries, where I take your favorite podcast episodes from Swisspreneur and compress them into snack-sized takeaways. Now, today's snack is actually more of a meal in terms of satisfaction, because I'm throwing it back and covering episode 108, with co-founder of On, Casper Copetti. On is one of the world's fastest growing sports brands. They recently went public this past September after only 11 years in business and having raised 760 million in IPO with an estimated 7.3 million, pardon me, 7.3 billion market value. On shoes are available in 60 countries around the world. And I'd say chances are pretty good that you or someone you know owns a pair of on shoes. Now, if you're impressed by the technology, wait until you hear the story of how they got to where they are today. This story is everything you would want. It's a mix of creative entrepreneurship, being resilient, and the right amount of recklessness. And I've divided the story for your digestion into three courses, running on clouds, getting your foot in the door and getting shit done. But first, an intro to Casper. Let's go. Casper grew up in an entrepreneurial family and claims entrepreneurship runs in his blood. During his education, Casper was always working alongside his studying to pay for his tuition. He worked as a journalist, moved into PR, did some consulting, but sports was always very central to everything he was doing. And while he was head of media relations for Ironman Switzerland, he met his soon-to-be co-founder Olivier, who was the guy always winning the races at Ironman. They hit it off and after two months of doing public relations for him, Casper became Olivier's agent. Years went by and one day Casper got a call from Olivier saying that he had co-invented a new pair of running shoes and he needed Casper's help to market them. Casper basically told him that that was a dumb idea, that he's never going to survive against competitors like Nike and Asics, Adidas, you name it. But Olivier insisted he help and he brought Casper a prototype and Casper was very quickly intrigued. In the full podcast episode, Casper talks about the vivid memory he has of trying on the shoes and walking around the table in the conference room. Not only was the product unique in that you could see the technology from the outside, but putting on the shoes and walking in them was unlike anything he had experienced on the market. Shortly after, David, a colleague that Casper met while at McKinsey Consulting, joined the team and that's when the story starts to get really exciting. Knowing the energy and the momentum of on now, it's hard to imagine a timid start. But Casper claims between that moment in the conference room and when the shoes finally hit the market were two full years of hard work and testing the product because they wanted to be sure that the excitement that they felt about the shoes, that feeling that Casper had when he first did that lap in the conference room was the same thing that the community that they wanted to target would feel. So they took the shoes to events like Ironman Switzerland and had over 200 runners testing out the products. And the response was overwhelming. A woman who had tested the shoes came back completely euphoric and said it felt like she was running on clouds. Eureka! Cloud tech was born. Now I love this part of the story because I think when we're just starting a project or a business, we invest so much time into trying to develop the perfect plan or the most catchy slogan when often the answer to a lot of our positioning is in the people and in the community. The team was able to leverage that and now it's just such a signature of the brand itself. On top of that, Casper claims that they never did any market research, never wrote out a business plan in the traditional sense. They just had a budget and an idea. And they're kind of running off the quote that your opportunity should be big enough that you don't need a calculator. When Sylvan asks Casper about the importance of timing when starting a business and whether or not 2010 was was good timing for on casper reflects that there wasn't really a right timing for them they were trying to introduce a heavily padded product at a time when barefoot was becoming really hot on a personal level they had all just bought houses had mortgages to pay and they left high paying secure executive positions for uncertainty and an idea now remember that being an entrepreneur wasn't always as cool as it is now in fact Casper and his colleagues felt a lot of stigma for leaving these high paying secure jobs at the time. But Casper claims that it was a very cleansing experience. Having his bank account back to zero in 2013 was the best thing that could have ever happened to him. He looks back on it as the freest time in his life. And that freedom is just another word for nothing to lose. He says, if you're holding on to something, you can't take risks. And if you can't take risks, you're not going to kick down those heavily bolted doors. 
Casper claims that two events were game changers for On. First, Casper met someone at a dinner party who worked for ISPO, which is the world's largest sporting goods fair. And every year, ISPO gives out an award for the most innovative brand. Other companies that had won this award were GoPro, Nixon, Crocs. Well, spoiler alert, On won, and when they were announced as the winner, literally the next day, he had hundreds of emails in his inbox from distributors from all over the world who were interested. Casper talks about walking out of the building after the expo, posters of On all over the walls, and over half a million dollars worth of orders in his pocket. They didn't have pricing figured out, they didn't know how they would sell, they didn't have everything ironed out with the producers, and yet somehow they went from innocent dinner party contact to kicking in their first major door. It just goes to show you that not everything needs to be perfectly aligned. Focus on what makes you unique and talk to as many people as you can about it. And that brings us to the second game changer strategy that Casper shared. While runners really love the product, On really struggled to get into retailers. They didn't have those high density foams, different inserts, and the retailers thought, this isn't a running shoe. They found the retailers were really resistant to seeing something that didn't look like everything else on the market. Casper talks about calling running stores and asking them how they liked the shoes that they sent them three weeks ago. And they found out that the shoes were sitting somewhere in the back, completely unopened. They hadn't even looked at them. And so the team said, forget it. We're not gonna send any more samples. We're not gonna talk about the shoes anymore. We're only gonna go running with people. Casper and Olivier traveled around the world to go running with store owners and 90% of the people they ran with placed an order. And that's how the brand really started to grow. Casper talks about those early days of getting a lot of pushback as being really exciting for him. He tells a story of flying to Boston three times before he even got to meet with a client. He would fly to Boston just to meet with this guy. The guy was in the building and he wouldn't even show up. But Casper says that gave him a ton of energy. And I think that really speaks to this entrepreneurial, competitive, athletic mindset where you have to find fuel where others might find failure. Casper claims that at the very beginning, the shoes were very much a love or hate product. There were 30 or 40 people who were diehard fans where one of them would walk into a running store and see a customer looking at the shoes and feel compelled to walk over to them and say, forget about what anyone's telling you, you have to buy these shoes. Taking these believers and turning them into voices of change was a crucial part of the strategy at On because they understood how opinions are formed in the performance space. When something new comes on the market, people tend to dismiss it until someone takes that product and becomes a world champion in it. No one's really gonna listen. So they believed these opinion leaders were crucial and doing the groundwork for them. Casper believes that you can find anyone running in a pair of on shoes today and trace that person back to one of the people they went running with back in the day. And to me, the lesson here is recruit those fans who will go out of their way to advocate for you. Remember the story of how cloud tech running on clouds got its name? Consider that not only are these people the best source of feedback and ideas for you, but they're also your best salespeople. Now relying on people who believe in your vision is also reflected in the structural organization at ON. Believe it or not, there is no CEO at ON, but rather five equal management partners on a flat hierarchy built next to each other rather than on top of each other. And the rationale behind this for Casper is simply the priority on getting shit done and not worry about hierarchies and decision-making having to always go up the ladder, but rather having more people executing more of the groundwork. So you have a structure where someone who starts as an intern is still held responsible for making relevant decisions. And this takes a big load off of the management team. Alternatively, you can do what On did and recruit Roger Federer to make some decisions with you. To hear more about how the On team got Roger on board, listen to the full episode on streaming platforms or at swisspreneur.org. When Olivier first called Casper about starting a shoe company, Casper hesitated and said, no, this market is super saturated. We're not gonna be able to compete with these guys. Because before he held the prototype in his hands, he didn't really see how this space could be disrupted with the new technology. What is a product or industry that you can think of in our present day that most people would think you'd be crazy for trying to reinvent. Let us know in the comments below. And as always, let us know which episodes you'd like to see covered next. Thanks for watching. Until next time, dream big and never stop learning. I gotta go for a run. Just kidding, I hate running, but the shoes are cool.